Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make it so you can have a gun damage AI and kill them. Right now, I don't have a gun attached to this gun handle right now, but just pretend there's a gun attached to it. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, um, you just need to make a stage. You need to have a AI spawn in. I already assume that if you want to do this, you already have AI spawn in. But if you don't know how to have AI spawn in, just place down a spawner component. Like, let's place it right there. Just configure it and spawn whatever AI you want by send object. You can also set the health and everything after you place down it. And then once you place it down, you need to go to this room, settings, and you need to scroll all the way down to AI and nav mesh and bacon nav mesh. That's what you see right here. This purple stuff is the pathing for the AI. Okay, so now that we got that done, I will show you how to make the gun handle detect AI. First, we're going to get an animation chip so we can just keep the gun in the air. I always do this first. It makes it way easier to work on the gun. Just place this in the air with a gun handle. Just go ahead and type in gun and it should come right up. Place it down. Connect it to the animation gizmo and turn it on. And now it will forever be here. And we don't need to move it to work on it. Let's give this a good amount of bullets. Let's give it dirty bullets. And just go ahead and, you know, <clears throat> yeah, just go ahead and uh, edit your gun, make it what you want, continuous fire, sports reload, whatever, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead, make sure that you have the um, grab on, though, because if it's not grabbable, we won't be able to use it. Where is the grab? Yeah, and now we're able to grab it. It teleports right back. We're going to go ahead and move this up a bit. I thought I had move one. We're going to move this up higher. And we're going to get a projectile launcher now. Just type in PRO. It should come right up. And just place it down right next to your gun handle like that. To connect it together, we're going to get a clamp gizmo. The clamp gizmo will connect the gun handle and the projectile launcher together. So if we move one of them, it's going to move both of them. You don't need to worry about it being... um. Don't know why that's white white line is there. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to worry about uh that's weird. Yeah, you don't need to worry about um the animation gizmo. You can keep that on. It's going to move all of it either way. Now that we have that, we're just going to connect our gun handle. I like to move all this stuff in the air so it doesn't get in the way of me building something connect the projectile origin to the projectile launcher in the direction and on gun fire to the fire direction and there we go we have um a gun handle and you can also reload it so um i actually don't want laser bullets because they're really loud and they don't really look too much like real bullets from a gun so i like to put it on paintball yellow and that way 
Is it not reloaded? Yeah, that way. There you go. It sounds more like a gun now. Now that we have that, we want to get a uh, Raycast chip. So get a Raycast chip. You can just type in R-A-Y and it will come right up. We're going to place it down. Sometimes the circuits disappear. If they disappear, just turn away and turn back and they should be there. Okay, so what the Raycast chip does is it will detect where the start position is of the vector and the direction that it's going. So, for example, if I point this to the ground, the start vector will be whatever the start position is and the ground will be the end position. So it's going to output the ground as the object, which is over here. Or a player, if you have it detect players, you can change this on the inside of the chip if you wanted to ignore players or object. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the projectile launcher the start position. We can't connect it like this, so we're going to get a get position chip so we can output the projectile launcher's position and that will turn it into a vector oh i hate that bug mm. anyway we're going to get the get position chip connect the projectile launcher to there it will turn it into a vector coordinates and we hook that up to the start position now the direction we're not going to hook this up to the direction. The direction, we actually want it to be forward. So we're going to get the get forward vector. <laughs> I, I, I think it's called get forward. Get, get forward vector. Yeah, it's called get forward vector. We're going to get a get forward vector and just place it down right here. You know, just have to turn around, turn back. I think that will stop happening if I save the game for a bit, but it's not really worth it because it's just going to happen again. Now we're going to get the forward direction of the projectile launcher. <laughs> or you can use this vector too. I mean, it's arguably the same thing because they're both one. So if you want to save a little bit of circuit space, just go ahead and do that. Now that we have the start position and the direction, if we aim it at something, it's going to tell us what it is. So if I go ahead and grab this, I don't think you can put the maker pen in your hand at the same time. So yeah, that's annoying. Um, Yeah, but it will output the object. So if I was to aim this at the floor, it's going to output maker pen object. And it's going to output the distance it's at, the hit position, the surface normal, the, the player, and if you hit it or not. This, we're going to change the max distance to whatever you want. I'm just going to change it to 999 because that's quite far away, 999 meters. And now that we have this, what we want is we want to output the AI as the object. You see, if we just aim it at the AI like this, it's not going to do anything. But it's not going to do anything because what chip is it? I keep forgetting. Type in um, rec. You should get the chip. Oh, that's the chip's name. From rec room object. You don't want two rec room object. Two rec room object is, uh, yeah, you, you don't want that. You want from rec room object. So what it does is this is not going to output as an AI. Let me get an AI chip real quick. Yeah, you see there's an AI here. And this is not going to connect because this ain't an AI variable yet. But if I connect the object that spawns from the chip to the from rec room object, 
then I can connect this to the AI and now it's going to tell me it's the skeleton swashbuckler. So we are going to keep this here. I'm going to make a little mistake and show you how to fix it. We don't want this here, but I'm going to place this here to show you that if we go ahead and, oh, I didn't spawn a chip yet. You want to get a combatant chip. Combatant receive damage. Combatant receive damage. I don't know why I have such trouble typing. And yes, you see it's a beta chip, so you need beta on. I mean, you need beta on to spawn the AI CV2 unless you're using CV1 or something like that. Anyway, what we want to do is we want to put our damage here, which is going to be 10. I would connect this to something like this. You're going to have to. Uh, only use one damage value because it's impossible to switch the damage values on the AI like a player. With a player, you can hit the head, torso, and body and it outputs a different number. You see head damage, torso damage, hand damage. But with the AI, there's only one thing you can hit and it doesn't output the stuff like a player. Can't wait till I add that though in the future. Uh, so the target is going to be the AI down here. It's going to turn white. Don't don't worry. It, it it's going to work. And what we want to do is we want to connect this to the firing direction. So whenever we fire the gun handle, it will do damage to the AI target. And the damage source combatant is going to be the player with the gun handle. And I'll get back to the ray cast chip eventually. But right now, we're just going to test this out. I'm going to go ahead and send test event. It's going to spawn both AI. You notice how when I start shooting, uh, sometimes that happens. It, it was working before, but sometimes it's a bit buggy and glitchy. I mean, what you expect, it's rec room. Yeah, but um, you want to keep the um player right here as a damage source. I think if you do this and you spawn in another AI, yeah, it's just going to do the same exact thing. That's a bug. That doesn't happen when it actually works. I've tested this. It um, so anyway, you want to connect the damage source to the play player right here. And as you can see, it only works with this AI. It didn't do any damage to that AI. So that would mean we would have to copy this over here, right? But the problem is, if we do that, what are we going to connect to here? Because this only takes one output from one of those. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to move this chip over to the Raycast chip. And we are going to connect this to the object. So if it's not connected to the object and we just connect the object to the yeah, we can't connect it to the target because it's an object. So we need to change it to an AI value and then it will connect to the target. And now if I spawn in the AI, now it's going to do damage to both the AI. When you shoot them. Yeah, I guess there's a problem when you spawn in one AI, it does damage to that AI. Oh, you know, I just figured out why that was happening. The reason it was doing that was because it was outputting that one AI and um, it wasn't outputting the Raycast object. Uh, anyway, that is how you make guns do damage to AIs. If you enjoyed the video, 
like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.